I love that song so much. It's just, it really is. You, you'll hear as I go on that that was absolutely the right thing to be singing because it's just amazing. So God does speak to people in loads of different ways. He, so sometimes it might just be a feeling we get, and that's like the Holy Spirit maybe giving us a nudge or leading us in a direction. Um, sometimes it's through reading a bit of scripture. A word will just jump out at us and, and grab us. Sometimes something someone says to you just sticks with you and doesn't make you go. Um, uh, ooh, mind. Um, sometimes you just imagine a picture. Like, it's a picture in your mind, and it's something really simple, but it, God uses that to speak to you. Or maybe even like expecting God to be communicating with you isn't even something you've thought about. I mean, I'll be honest, for me, it's a mixture of everything. I mean, sometimes there are times where I'm thinking, does God even speak to me? <laughs> like, you have those moments where that stuff doesn't happen. Um, but for me, what often happens is I'll often just get a single word or a simple picture um, just pop in my head when I'm praying. And then the step of faith is often just speaking that out, and then God fills in the blanks. So, like... Um, yeah, a lot of the times the meaning isn't even clear as it pops in your head, but as soon as you start speaking it, sometimes it happens instantaneously and the words just flow and it's weird. Um, <laughs> I find it weird. Um, <laughs> and other times it takes a few days or even longer to actually understand what was being said in those moments. Um, so recently one of these moments happened to me while I was praying for someone and it was the word wonder, which popped in my head, wonder. So that's what I want to speak about today. Um, so my initial thought on this, as I was praying, was that I thought God wanted to remind them, and us, um, that we're fearfully and wonderfully made, um, and that's how we're seen by him. That, and, and you know that is absolutely true, and that is complete an encouraging thing for us all to hear. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, in God's eyes, we're his masterpieces, and that is absolutely true, and something you can hold on to. But I don't think, in, in this instance, that wasn't what God was wanting to impress on me I don't think so it felt like I hadn't hit the, hit the nail on the head and I shared this with what with my dad and he 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 had the explanation and that happens when you share it people do offer explanations um, and it just made complete sense and it felt like you know when you have a sneeze coming for ages and it happens that's what it felt like it was just relieved it was like yes that was it yep there we go and when I realized this, I was like, ah, this is the thing. This is something that God wants to share with all of us. Um, so here we go. This is what it is. Um, the actual reason it popped in my head was to remind me, and I'm hoping all of us now, to get our eyes off of ourselves and onto the wonder of God, onto his wonder, to fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Um, we hear this so much in this church. We sang it this morning. We, it's pretty much Ollie's catchphrase, um, and this is because it's absolutely true. It's, we're even like told this by Paul explicitly in Hebrews uh, when he says, uh, "Since we're surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us." We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Getting our eyes off of ourselves and onto Jesus just shifts our perspective. And that's what he's saying. I mean, it's the, it is the answer to avoiding that sin that can easily trip us up. And it can help us stop living from with these like, insecurities and anxieties that get in the way of stop, like, from achieving what we're meant to be achieving. Um, but that is a lot easier said than done. I mean, it should be really simple. Do that. Life's easy. It's not. I mean, you can hear, but people, when people say, fix your eyes on Jesus, sometimes it can feel like, yeah, I get that. What do you mean? Like, what does, what does that actually look like? What do I do? So, I mean, that's what I'm going to look at today, if that's all right. I mean, it's kind of got to be. I, <laughs> that's all I've got. <laughs> so I'm going I'm to jump straight to a bit of scripture, which I think tells us a lot about this whole concept which is the Moses at the burning bush. And I'm going to give us some backstory first to lead into this. So just so we're all on the same page. So I'm going to go super quick through Exodus 1 and 2. Here we go. <clears throat> I won't get that quick, don't worry. Um, so Moses was born at a time in Egypt when um, the Pharaoh had ordered all newborn Hebrew boys to be killed. 
and that was because he was afraid that the Israelite population was going to like overrun them, like um, be large enough to challenge them. Um, so Moses was was born, and he was hidden for as long as his mother could manage. That was about three months, um, and then she put him in a basket and left him in some reeds on the edge of the Nile, just trusting God to sort it out. Um, his, his Moses' sister then waited nearby to see what would happen. Um, the Pharaoh's daughter came along, saw Moses, and took pity. Um, and um, then Moses, Moses' sister saw this happen and went over to the Pharaoh's daughter and said, Oh, do you need any help? That made me laugh, by the way. I don't know about anyone else. I just had the thought of her going over and being like, Oh, you need someone to find, look after the baby, do you? Oh, I can go find someone. And then she goes and finds Moses' mother. And then... <laughs> I found that funny. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, um, <laughs> so Moses' mother then took it, look, nursed Moses to a point where he was old, a bit older, and then um, the Pharaoh's daughter, the princess, um, adopted him, and so he then grew up in a life of privilege. Um, so when he was all grown up, he went out to one of the sites that the Hebrews were being forced to work at, and he saw the oppression there for himself. Um, an Egyptian was beating up a Hebrew, so Moses, you know, had a look round, make sure no one was looking, and then killed him. The next day, he's back, and he sees two Hebrews fighting each other. So he steps in and tries to break it up. But then they turn to him, and they say, who are you to be our prince and judges? You, you killed a guy yesterday. <laughs> so he then panicked, thinking, oh no, everyone knows what I've done, oh no. Um, they did, Pharaoh was going to have him killed. So then Moses ran off to a place called Midian, where he stayed for like 40 years. He grew up, got married, had children. Um, and meanwhile, the Pharaoh, who's there at the time, had died, and a new one took his place, but the oppression continued. So God chose this moment to step in, and this is where we come to Moses at the burning bush. So I've got a film of this. Yeah. Sorry, I have to stop it there. I got that sense of excitement in the room, like when a teacher wheels out a TV. So, <laughs> sorry. So, um, yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry. Prince of Egypt, go watch it. Um, yeah, I thought that would be really useful to help tell this part of the story because it's so dramatic and awesome. Um, but the first thing that really jumps out at me reading the scripture as well is when God says um, to Moses, take off your sandals. This is holy ground. And I think that this gives us our first like really practical point for like getting our eyes on Jesus and off of ourselves. Um, I'm not about to, you know, I'm not about to say let's take our shoes off here this morning. Like, unless you really want to, but, I mean, be considerate of those around you because, you know, smells. Um, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Um, but the whole thing is actually more about the idea of getting our hearts and attitudes right before we try and focus on Jesus. Let's approach him with this reverence and, and expectation, this humility. That's the whole point of taking off the sandals, was to show this attitude of humility towards God. This is holy ground this morning. This is, this is, we should be, not should, don't like the word should. It's good to be bringing that sense of expert, like humility and expectation that God's going to speak where we're coming this morning. I mean, it does happen to all of us that sometimes we come to church because we come to church because that's the routine, that's what we do and it's so easy to do that but what, why are we coming to church? That, I mean, it's not, it's not for the tea I mean <laughs> no offence to the tea <laughs> the coffee's better um, it's, I mean, it's great to be in an environment where like, we're, we're, we can meet people, make friends be supported by each other um, feel encouraged um, and uplifted, ready for the rest of the week and that's great, but if that's, if that's all that it is then we've missed the, the important bit of going to church. Um, remember, this is holy ground. With the, what we can be aiming for is hearing that very same voice that was speaking to Moses through the burning bush. That is what we can be getting. I mean, how amazing is that? Um, and that I, I would say that that should be our main reason for meeting together is to be listening out for that voice, that that burning bush voice um, today. But, I mean, practically, so I want to be quite practical. I want to know how can that, we actually do that. I want to, so I'm going to offer some quick suggestions for how that could happen. Take them or leave them, but enjoy them. Um, so I would say, 
maybe try praying before you come to church. Just pray, God, speak to me this morning. What have you got? I mean, you don't ask, you don't get. You know what I mean? So <laughs> like, just pray it. Pray, God, what do you want to show me? Maybe pray, God, give me a word to share with someone, encouragement to give to someone else. And then we're like encouraging each other and, and coming together. Um, maybe remember to engage in our times of worship. Like, because th- these, they, we're not just doing holy karaoke. Like, we're, we are meant to be, like, what, what is amazing about them is these are times of offering our adoration and praise to God. And I mean, I'm not a very wordy sort of person in the slightest. So being able to have these words just put into my mouth that I can sing and offer to God is amazing. And I, and I really appreciate that. Maybe really listen to the talk. Like, try and find that, that one nugget that you're going to take from it and really go from the week and maybe make a note of it. And then you can be encouraged again and again. Don't rush away at the end of the service. There might be a conversation that God wants to speak to you through, through other people. Let's take our sandals off together here this morning. Have that level of expectation. And because God definitely wants to speak. I know it. It's just um, sometimes it takes just that step of um, humility and, and, and offering it over to God. So the next part of this encounter that struck me was just how much Moses protested. Um, it's, it doesn't do it justice in the film, actually, but in the Bible it's, it is like relentless. Every single sentence, Moses is going, um, who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Uh, who am I to lead the people out of Israel, of Egypt, the people of Israel out of Egypt? Um, what if they don't believe me? What if they say the Lord never actually appeared to me? I'm not very good with words, never have been. And it goes on. It's, it is funny. Um, and, but this is so relatable to all of us, isn't it? I mean, and this is like Moses. This is like one of the giants of faith. Um, but, and, and a lot of this, actually, if you think about it, would have been through those past hurts he suffered. And again, that's so relatable to all of us. Just think about how much Moses would have, would have been thinking about those moments, that time he, he, he killed someone, that time when he gets, he gets told by the people he's now being asked to lead who are you to be our prince and our judge? I mean, those words that would have been spoken would have been just flooding right back to him at that moment. Because, I mean, think about all those like conversations you've had in the past with people when it hasn't gone well. And every time it just, every now and again it comes back and you're like, oh no, and you just feel it there. Uh, I would say that that would be that, but it's 10 times worse, 100 times worse. Um, He's saying, I've never been good at words. And that, again, that suggests to me that's something he's always struggled with, not being good with words. Um, oh, yeah, it's just those things that we, it's, it's like those things that we, we choose to believe about ourselves, those things we always struggle with and just feel unable to improve. We tell ourselves that which we believe about us, that others have said about us, and often it always just comes back to us. It's always what's going on with me. Um, and that's what all of Moses' arguments with God were about. It was all about him. It wasn't about God. It was all about his issues and his what ifs and all of that. He just didn't, at that moment in time, he just didn't trust God that God could be making the right decision in the choosing Moses. So how did Moses get past this? And how, how can we get past it? More, well, I can say more importantly, it is for this morning. How do we get past this? Um, what was it that God said to Moses to get him moving? And what is it that he's saying to us to get us moving? Well, it wasn't through reminding Moses of who Moses has been made to be or through anything about Moses. He didn't, he didn't go up and say, oh, I've, I've, you're, I've made you for this. You're, you're, oh, and give him a stroke and all that. He does do that. But in this moment, what he said to Moses was he just reminded him of who he is. So he said, I am, I'll be with you. I am who I am. He then like, even commanded Moses to perform some, some signs to prove that God sent him. So actually one of them was, he said, put your hand in your robe and then put it out. And when he pulled it out, his hand was all diseased and horrible. And he put it back in and it was fine again. But it was all about God proving to, to Moses that God's with him. God's this wonder with him. Um, when Moses says, I'm not, I'm not good with words, God just responds, who makes a person's mouth? I mean, this is the thing that really struck out in me, and this is the thing that made me want to share this, that I knew this was the scripture to share this morning, is who makes a person's mouth? 
who decides whether people speak or do not speak, hear or do not hear, see or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in what to say. I mean, this, this does all come back to that word that pops in my head while I was praying. Wonder. Moses saw the wonder of God at this burning bush. He knew where his focus should absolutely be, and it's the same for us here this morning. Wonder at God and who he is. Think about all that he's already done for each and every one of us. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That's the big thing. I mean, if that's all you take from this morning, take that. Um, this is the same God who hung the stars in the sky, the, the Dipper, Orion, the Pleiades, and the stars of the south. Let's stand in awe of creation and all that comes from him. He, God is with us always. Do we just need to remember to look at him and who he is, and we can find fresh confidence and strength to do all that he calls us to. Let God show you his wonders as well. So all Moses had was his shepherd's staff. Actually, his hand didn't put into his rope, but his, she his shepherd's staff. And God told him to use that and watch as he did the rest. With it, he, 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 so he turned the staff into a snake when he put it on the ground, and then it turned back into a staff when he picked it up. Um, he used the staff to turn water in the Nile to blood. He used it to part the Red Sea. I mean, Moses did have to risk looking a bit foolish with it as well, because, I mean, walking up with a stick to some water, expecting it to part, I mean, that's crazy. But he trusted God was going to do it, because God proved himself time and again. Um, and all of it was intended by God to show the wonder of God. And Moses always made sure everyone knew it. It was always pointing back to God. So, I mean, my, my question in this bit is, what is it that you've got that God wants to use to show his wonders? What's, what staff have you got that sticks in your hand to, to help, to, yeah, to display God's wonders? And we also trust that God, trust God when he says he'll always be with us. Because he will. He said that to Moses repeatedly. That's the, one of the, the things that kept on coming back during every single one of Moses' arguments. It was, I'll be with you. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll help you. Um, and it's what Jesus said before he ascended. He said, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. You know, we can stand in wonder at God for all he's done, all he's doing, and all he's going to do. And that's how Moses managed it. There you go. Simple. Easy. There we go. No, sorry. So I'm really sorry if you've already heard this story, but I feel like it's going to be really helpful to, to, to illustrate this point a bit. Um, but yeah, I am sorry if you've heard it before, but if you, if you know me at all, you'll know that repeating my stories is kind of my thing. My, my friends get a bit sick of it. Right, pal. Um, so, <laughs> but I really want to share this because it, it, it it's such a small scale thing, but it's a great example of this playing out. It, is, it was crazy. So a few years ago, I felt, I really felt a nudge by the Holy Spirit to do something out of my comfort zone. On my own, and then I, uh, and I wanted to go volunteer at an event with Tear Fund. Um, so I decided to take the risk. I got signed up, and I, I took part in this event. Um, so initially, the plan was I was going to be... Um, so initially, my plan was, oh, I'll go work at the cafe, serve coffee. And it's nice and safe. I've got a barrier between me and, and everyone else. And, you know, it's an easy job and all of that. But the people running the event asked me to be part of the team to go up to people and ask them for money. Just walk up to strangers in the, in the, in the event and ask for money. Um, now, that's not, my, that's not me. That's not my skill set. <laughs> I don't walk up to strangers and say hello. Um, I mean, it's nice to sometimes, but I, I, I just don't, I, it's not what I'm comfortable with. It's a real stretch for me. I mean, let alone asking them for money. I mean, come on. Um, but... I made the journey down, I pitched up my tent, and then we were pretty much straight into it. I maybe had an hour of, of food before we went straight off to the first ship. Um, and I just remember standing there in the middle of this field, being expected to just ask people for money. And I was just thinking, what am I doing here? What? I'm no good at this, this is not me. I, I can't speak to people. And, I, and the big one was just, I'm so embarrassed, what am I doing? <laughs> it was just like, oh. Um, and I know that this is such a small example because it's literally only a weekend. Like, it was a weekend. It's not a life calling. It wasn't anything massive. So to compare it with Moses is a bit mental. I know that. 
but it, it was such a small scale thing because I know that what I then had to do was focus on God. So that's what I did that first night. Got into my tent, I prayed, I listened to some worship music, and I just refocused. And I was like, I needed, I needed to trust in that nudge from the, the initial nudge from the Holy Spirit that this is what I needed to do that year. Um, and actually, by the end of the weekend, I was having fun. I, I was walking up to groups of people and asking them for money. I even had some cracking opening lines. It was like walking up to a big group of people and going, <clears throat> can I be really generous and give you a minute of my time? I thought that was amazing. <laughs> so <laughs> I got people to sign up for that. I, <laughs> I, um, I, I actually got people to... to had some great conversations and I saw the saw the money roll in. I mean, I got a bit, not loads. Thank you, Mark. Um, so, <laughs> but my confidence grew massively. It's just a result of this one little weekend because I because I could see that God was there. God did this. Um, so yeah, my confidence in myself grew, but it was mainly my confidence in in God that grew um, because I knew that it was Him who gave me the ability to do that. Because none of those things are, are my natural gifts. This is all this is all God doing it and me trusting in Him. So, if God's speaking to you, then listen to Him. If He's calling you to do something, then listen to Him and not you, not me. Don't listen. <laughs> if it's me, don't listen to Him. Um, I mean, it makes life so much simpler. It really does. I mean, it doesn't make it easier, because in my in my experience, the more God grows you the bigger the challenges become and you just have to rise to them and God will help you, God will, God will be there with you. Um, but you can look back at all those moments where you saw the wonder of God and, and you can trust him to do it all over again. It's, it's so true, it's crazy. Um, so I just want to finish this morning with the words of Corey Ten Boom, who if you don't know who she is, she was, um, her family, her and her family saved many, many Jewish lives from the Nazis. Um, back in the Holocaust. Um, so what she says, and it, it, this is the thing to remember, this is the takeaway from today. So, If you look at the world, you'll be distressed. If you look within, you'll be depressed. But if you look at Christ, you'll be at rest. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you. <laughs> I thank you so much that, that everything you've already done for us. I thank you that You've saved us. I thank you that we're free. We're we're able to live a life without condemnation. Or oh oh yeah, we're just free. I just thank you so much for that. I thank you for all that you've done, all the wonders you perform, all the miracles in our own lives that you've done, all the change we've seen. And I just pray this morning that you you speak to us here. You, we lead change. That you oh yeah, you just give us something to share and encouragement with other people. Um, or a word for ourselves, and I just thank you so much for you. Amen.